Hi everybody, uh, I'm going to explain you a little bit about HTML and CSS, but before that I will just mention the World Wide Web, its history and how it works, what is it briefly. Then uh, I will explain you the HTML and the CSS. Hypertext Markup Language, HTML stands for that, Hypertext Markup Language, and CSS is a part of it, not a part of it, but a companion of it, Cascading Style Sheets. And then uh, we will together have a little bit of exercise on creating some HTML documents and formatting them with CSS. Uh, using CSS. So, but first, a little bit about the web, a few words about the web, its history and how it works. Let's start with the definition. Probably you know what is web or word by web, shortly the web. Uh, but here there is a definition, as you see, it's a way of accessing a globally shared document. Well, there is a document which is shared on a computer. It's a document on a computer and it is shared and anybody who is connected to this network, the worldwide network, this is the internet, can access this document. So, this is called World Wide Web. So, as you know, World Wide Web is not equal to Internet. Internet is the name of the global network. Uh, and using this global network, we can reach to many services. World Wide Web is one of them. What are those other services like email, file transfer, voice over IP? All of those are different services. But in, uh, World Wide Web is one of those services. But we sometimes say internet but we try we mean world wide web why is it like that because well before the world wide web there was internet internet is much older than world wide web but it was not widely accepted by the people uh, it's not it's not widely used it was a, just a government uh, project and some universities were using it, but it was not popular uh, now uh, as it is today. Uh, because those applications on the internet was not interesting for the people. The email or file transfer was not very interesting for the people. But the World Wide Web is a kind of killer application of the internet. So it made internet very popular. People start to demand internet connection to access World Wide Web services. That is uh, why we think the World Wide Web and the Internet sometimes in the same way. So we say Internet, but we mean World Wide Web usually. And also, World Wide Web is so popular, and for this reason, the other services that is given through Internet are also available through World Wide Web. So you can uh, use email through World Wide Web. That's the web-based email. Or you can use voice over IP through World Wide Web, like Google Hangouts. You can make some uh, voice talks using a web browser. And, uh, or file transfer, you can just download, upload files using a word, uh, web browser too. This, is, uh, this depends on the popularity of World Wide Web. So here is a definition and let's talk a little bit about what are websites technically. Here again another definition. It, uh, it says that it's a set of interlinked documents. There are some documents, they are linked to each other, which are residing in the same domain. So these documents are in the same domain. Domain means something like that. Uh, bow at the TR is a domain, for example. Well, it should. It doesn't have to be the same computer. There might be multiple computers in the sa uh, same domain. Uh, but these documents in the same domain, uh, which are interlinked, are called a website. Well, those documents are written in a language called hypertext markup language. Uh, 
and this is a browser readable uh, language so there is this special software called web browser and the documents created in this hypertext markup language can be uh, viewed by uh, using a web browser so to have the World Wide Web, you should have the HTML. So the HTML is as old as World Wide Web itself. Let me try to explain how it works shortly, briefly. So this black thing here, I guess you see that, this one here, is your web browser. That's the browser window. You write an address here, and you write the domain name of this web uh, site site.serverb.net for example this is our server b this one here and on this website there is an html document just a file like other files on a computer named xyz so suppose that it is sorry 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 suppose that it is this one here that thing is our document. And when you access to it, you reach to this one, and your this document is actually downloaded to your computer. There is this special place, special folder, let's say, in your computer called Browser's Cache. This is the web browser, and this is the web browser's cache. And this file is temporarily uh, stored on your computer, and Downloaded to your computer, stored there, and opened by the web browser, but you don't need to download it, click to open, just web browser does all of those automatically. And also, this HTML document might be referring to some other files, the image files, for example, or videos. There might be some other references to other resources. They are also downloaded to your computer. Suppose that this one is a video and this one is an image file. They are also downloaded to your computer. So you view them on your web browser, the HTML document, and the images uh, referred by this document. You all view all of them on your web browser. And, well, there are some other documents linked to that. So you click on somewhere on this, you go here, you go to visit this, you visit this. And also there are some links, there might be some links to the other websites. This is another website. So on those computers who, who are uh, serving you these web pages are called web servers. So there are some different types of software running on those computers. For example, Microsoft has this uh, Internet Information Server, which is a uh, web server. I guess that is the uh, name for it, IIS. And the most popular web server application software is the Apache web server application. These are running on the servers. This is briefly how the Internet, the World Wide Web, sorry, works. And it's based on the internet, which is an, another technology. But this is not our topic, I guess. This is enough for us. There might there are some te other technical deta details, but it's kind of engineering stuff. And you don't need to understand to design websites. Uh, the other details, like the what is the HTTP request, what are the types of HTTP requests, etc. You don't need to understand them right at the moment. But I guess this information, I, uh, I guess you already knew this, but uh, I just tried to uh, remind you about these stuff. So, briefly, its history is, it's not very old. In 1989, there's this guy, a physicist guy, Tim Berners-Lee, the black and white photo here. Uh, uh, showing when he was young, and now he looks like that nowadays. Well, he's still fit. Uh, this guy invented some technology in the CERN laboratories. Well, this guy is a physicist, not a computer scientist, actually. And he was working in, as a physicist in the famous CERN laboratories. I guess you heard about them. They are making this uh, Hadron Collider and try, they are trying to blow up the world, etc. So, what uh, he was trying to do was, he was trying to make a system 
for his colleagues, the other physicists he works together, so they can share their research, they can share the, some information with each other. Uh, he was trying to do something like that. And then he came up with this idea of client-server architecture, and he came up with this very basic language, markup language, hypertext markup language. Uh, uh, he came up with that idea. He built all the things. He built the first web, web browser. He uh, has uh, coded the very first web server application. He made uh, the hypertext markup language. He made some documentation for it, etc. And, well, that was uh, in 1993, but he made this in, uh, during his work hours, so that product, the World Wide Web technology, belongs to CERN. But in 1993, 30, April 30th, 1993, CERN made a statement and they said that they are giving it away for free. Anyone who wants to use this World Wide Web technology, uh, sometimes called W3 or simply the web, please remind you, they can use it without any payment, say, on a royalty-free basis. So, this also, uh, this allowed the web to flourish. This, uh, well, there were some universities, some research institutions back in the uh, early 90s who were using the uh, World Wide Web, but when it is made freely available for everybody, then it helped the World Wide Web to become much more popular. But also it was a popular source, so that made, probably that made the World Wide Web the killer application. So, this guy, Tim Berners Lee, a uh, young physicist in 1989, he invented this, the technology that now the world depends on. Well, uh, we have, uh, we reach many services, many things using World Wide Web, but he made it on his work hours, and that technology belonged to CERN, his uh, employer, and looks like he's an unfortunate guy, he couldn't make any money out of it. Yes, indeed, he couldn't make any money by selling this technology, but he made lots of conferences, he became very famous, and he earned a lot from those conferences and other stuff, so don't be pity for him. He's a good guy, and he uh, got what he deserved, I mean, what he uh, needs to get uh, at the end of the day. So, we don't need to be sorry about him, but we, uh, uh, we will remember him uh, as a uh, very important inventor. So, if you need to uh, learn a little bit more about this World Wide Web project, there is this uh, hyperlink on the slide. Uh, you can visit that uh, link and uh, learn a little bit more about the history of World Wide Web. So, let's continue with HTML and CSS. Actually, HTML is a quite simple language. It is a markup language, hypertext markup language. So, that means it's not a program, it's not like programming languages. You cannot uh, make any calculations, for example, using uh, HTML. You cannot make, it cannot give you the result of the mathematical operation like 2 plus 2. It cannot tell you this. It's just for making uh, layouts uh, and formatting the text and formatting the other stuff that is going to be shown on a web browser. So, it's quite simple to create HTML files. You just need a basic text editor like Notepad, Notepad Plus. Uh, these are some Windows software. For uh, macOS, there is this text edit software. So just a simple text editor is enough. And also there is a less simple. There are some less simple text editors. We are going to use the Sublime Text which is a cross-platform available for both macOS and Windows. Uh, or, you may use some 
uh, what you see is what you get kind of editors such as Adobe Dreamweaver, Microsoft Expression Web. So on those software, you don't just type the code, but uh, you can just drag and drop stuff and change the position of the uh, HTML elements, right click, access to some other menus, set the colors using menus, etc. And these are also some other tools, but well, usually uh, professional front end developers uh, do not uh, prefer to use those kind of software. Some good text editor is good for a front end, uh, good enough for a front end developer usually. So, the HTML, how can you write it? Just open a, the Notepad software or text edit, we are going to do that right after those slides with the with your computer write some html save this html page with an html with the dot htm extension or dot html extension it doesn't matter but uh, i prefer dot html and then double click the saved file and view it in your browser that's it so this thing here is the code and this thing here is the result of this code appearing in the web browser. Well, HTML consists of tags, well, as you see here, these are tags, these are in uh, angle brackets, these are called angle brackets, the things in the angle brackets are called tags. So, uh, some of those tags are open tags, like this one here, this doc type HTML. It starts like that, but there is no doc type HTML tag that closes it, so these are called open tags, like the image tag, for example, it's an open tag, or this horizontal rule, some it makes just a line, horizontal line. Uh, on the browser and break br uh, these are open text and you can write them, them like this hr slash or just hr it's possible to do that and this is an image tag this is the tag image and these are the the uh, light pink one is the uh, tag itself and the darker uh, things are the attributes, some of the attributes that you can use with that tag. In addition, there are closed tags, uh, like this one, B, some text, and then slash B. That means the text between these Bs are going to be bolted, will be written in bold. Or this one, H1, which has some attributes. And it's closed like that. And this is going to be a heading kind of text. And also there are those comments. This stuff. We don't use them a lot. But, well, this one, for example, doc type HTML is a kind of command. Ah. This is the structure of the HTML language. All the tags are here. So there are tags that we use in the head part of a document and body part of the document. The head part tags are like title, script, etc. And on the body part, there are some element blocks. Or sorry, block elements, sorry. And scripts, are, scripts also can be used uh, inside the body, but the other things are block elements, like P for paragraph, or table, or tables, obviously. And there are those headings elements, like H1, H2, up to H6. And there are those list elements, like unordered list, the bulleted list, the bullets, bullets. 
or order this one, two, three, four, one, this, this, two, this, this, or A, B, C, D, you can just format it. And on those ordered lists, there are list elements. It goes like that. I'm not going to explain all of them. Uh, but uh, you can learn those texts when you are uh, coding HTML. You can learn about those different texts and you learn about their attributes. They don't uh, use the same attributes. For example, there is a source for an image, image SRC, like this one image source and you uh, define an URL for it, but there is no source for a table. So you learn it by time, by doing it, and there are some very, really good websites. I'm going to mention some of them. Probably we will use some of them during the rest of this uh, class. So these are HTML tags. And there is another thing that you use along with HTML. It's called CSS, Cascading Style Sheets. Well, I like this definition a lot. They are like two bodies of a single soul. In the beginning, there was no CSS, but nowadays you cannot think uh, about HTML without CSS. CSS is a powerful way of uh, formatting uh, uh, defining some visual formats for HTML text. So the HTML texts are objects, and in order to visually modify those objects, you use this CSS language. So HTML texts themselves have some capabilities of uh, creating some visual formats, but uh, it's not enough. So the CSS extends their capability of uh, creating some, making some visualizations. So, there are different methods of uh, using CSS. One is using it inline inside the HTML. So, here is a P paragraph tag. And to make this uh, text color red, you just write this style attribute and it's equal to this CSS color red. This is the inline method. The other method is the internal method. So you don't write the code inside the body part of the HTML, but you write the code on the head part. You add some style tags here and you make some definitions. So this means that the P all the P's, all the paragraphs in this uh, document will be colored in red. So if you write it here, and if you need to add an, another paragraph, you need to write again style equal to color red. But in that case, the internal method, you don't need to repeat this because that makes all the P's red. And the other method is having an external file, a linked file, and put that CSS code on that file. By doing this, you can put this uh, code in many different files. And just by changing this red to green, you make all of those documents, or you make all the text in those documents, uh, change all of those texts to green. Just change one line on one file, and all of them are changed. This is the other, uh, this is the most popular way of using CSS nowadays. Uh, most of the, all of the modern websites uh, have external, use external CSS. So, let's do it. How we are going to do that? I'm going to switch to my desktop and Let's close PowerPoint. Yeah, this is my desktop. And first of all, let's create a new folder and name it to root. So this is going to be the main folder, root folder of my website. I'm going to do everything in that folder. 
Let's open that folder. And you may right click and create a new text document. Or another way of doing that is just run the Notepad application. Notepad. And let's save this as. Let me go to my desktop. And this is my root. And let's save it as. Uh, well, we are going to make a zoo website. So let's name it as zoo. And let's say change this to save as type to all files and set the extension to .html. So when I save it, it is an HTML file. If you forgot to do it, let me save it, save it as again. If you just accidentally save it as a text document, uh, let's name this to my zoo. And if you accidentally save it to a, as a text document, just close it and just change the extension to HTML. If you cannot see the extensions, just go to the win view tab on your uh, computer and uh, make the file name extensions here visible. And then you can Rename this to zoo.html. It asks me, do you want to change it? Yes, I want to change it. So both are HTML files. Well, I'm going to delete this one. Let's keep it my zoo. So let's double click and open it on a web browser. Well, here there is nothing. My zoo HTML, it says. Let's open the notepad again and I'm going to drag and drop this into notepad so the my zoo HTML file is open so let's write something in it let's write hello Oop. world inside it and save and let's go to the browser again well, let's double click to this my zoo to open the browser and okay we see the text here it says hello world let's have a little bit more text in it i need a few paragraphs of text so there is this website called lipsum.com which is a very helpful tool it creates you some lorem ipsum text let's have three paragraphs of lorem ipsum which starts with lorem ipsum dollars something something yeah i got three paragraphs of lorem ipsum right now i'm going to copy it and let's go to the notepad paste it here and refresh it Uh, never translate Latin. Maybe I should have translated it. I'm curious a little bit about what does this Lorem Ipsum thing means. But you can find information on this website. What does it mean? What is Lorem Ipsum, etc. So, we copied these three paragraphs and pasted in the notepad. But when we see it on the browser, there is no paragraphs here, as you see. And, well, those lines depend on the width of your browser as you see so i'm going to close this lorem ipsum but keep the my zoo uh, if that was an html file let me remove those it should be something like that. I deleted the lorem ipsum text, so I'm starting with a tag. I'm going to declare the document type first. It is going. It is HTML. Well, this is actually not necessary for the web browser, 
but this is necessary for the server itself. Uh, this is usually done to make the server understand that this file is an HTML file, the file type declaration. And then the it's followed by the HTML tag. And HTML is a closed tag, so I'm going to close it. Maybe I can make it a little bit bigger for you. Oh, there's a zoom here. Let's zoom in. And between those HTML tags, I'm going to start with a... I'm going to create a head tag. And head is also a closed tag, which is going to be followed by a body tag. Body is also a closed tag. And, well, we don't need this space here. It is not necessary for the computer, but for our, for the human beings to make this uh, HTML code a little bit easier to read, we make this indentation thing. So I just have a space here and here. Okay, so HTML indented head and body inside it. And let's make a, let's add a paragraph tag in this body. It is a closed tag too. And in within the inside this paragraph, let me paste this lorem ipsum thing again. So you can go to lipsum.com and create some more. So and uh, let's cut this out. So I just have one paragraph between those P's. And again, some indentation for the P. And I'm going to paste the other paragraph here. Let me cut this out. Well, let me not cut this out. Let's keep it like that. There is one P tag here and there is other P tag here from here to here. And let's save it and go to the browser, refresh it. As you see, this P thing helps us create a paragraph, but although this text here is, uh, there's some spacing between these, this part, dollar and Ainan. I don't know what the, what those mean, what they mean, but, so let's try to find it. Let's use find. So here, dollar, Ainan, but there is no space as you see. So what needs to be here is let's close this P and open another P, stands for paragraph here. P, 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 it goes like that. So save the file, go to browser, refresh, and now we got three paragraphs. So, okay, as you see, we can easily modify this thing with uh, the uh, simple text editor. But when it gets a little bit complicated, when you have more text. So inside the head, I'm adding this title thing. This is the head part. As you see, right at the moment, it says the file name here. But when I had, when I add something to this title area, let's suppose that we are going to have a zoo, Bahçesehir University Zoo. And let's refresh it. 
So now, as you see, this title is shown here. So the things in the body are rendered in the browser window, and the things on the head are for defining some stuff uh, about the document, usually. Well, uh, that is a good uh, software to edit HTML the notepad or text edit, that is enough, actually. But, uh, there are some other more, uh, uh, some better text editors. One of them is the Sublime Text. You can download it from the, the Sublime Text that, oh, I'm not sure, is it org or com? Well, let's Google it. SublimeText.com it is. You can download it from here for free. And that is a... Uh, there is a portable version too for Windows. There's some, there's these portable versions. For macOS, it is available and also it's available for Linux. It's up to you. You can download the normal version or portable version. They are both good. Uh, they have, they both have the same functionality. So let's go here and find it. Oops. Do I have it? Yes, I have it. This is my sublime text. So, let's minimize this. I already closed the uh, notepad. There is nothing running on the notepad. And now I'm going to open this file, my zoo, by dragging and dropping it into Sublime Text. When you do that, well, now it is much more easier to read, follow, because the tags are color-coded. One of the things that this thing is capable of. The other thing is, I'm going to head a title here, kind of heading. So I'm going to open a, the tag, type H and 1. And now it recognizes that I'm trying to write H1, so it gives me here. When I click on it, it automatically makes it H1, opens here, and gets closed here. So the heading is, well, suppose that we are making a, a page for our lion, well, it's a female lioness, in our zoo. Okay, so this is the heading one. Let's see it in the browser. Refresh it. This is the liners, and this is the information about the liners. And let's add an image about for this liners. I'm going to use this. Uh, first of all, we need the images. Uh, so I'm going to go to this. Google Images and search for some lioness image on Google Images. There was some nice image on Wikipedia, but I cannot find it right now. Lioness Wikipedia. Maybe that's easier. So, yeah. There are some cool lion image, lioness images on Wikipedia. Let's use this one. And let's open it on Wikipedia. Let's right click and save image as. Let's go to the desktop and go to the root folder. You can save it right here, but traditionally on websites, the images are saved in a folder called images. 
that is a tradition. Okay, you don't have to do this. It's not a technical requirement, but since the uh, late 90s, it's done in this way. Maybe earlier than this. This is the time I started to uh, use this HTML thing, late 90s. But uh, traditionally, it is the images folder. So let's have let's name this file as Linus, and the extension is JPEG, and save it. Well, since we are here, let's look for some more other elements. Let's have an elephant in our zoo. You can have any animal you like uh, in your zoo, but I'm going to have an elephant. Let's take an image from Wikipedia again. They are usually royalty free. And let's have... This one. And save the image here again in the same folder as elephant JPEG. And I need one more animal. Let's have a parrot. Oops, my mistake. Parrot. I've got a parrot. I'm looking for a parrot image. Yeah, like this one. And save this one too. Let's call it simply parrot. I save this too. So let's see those files. Let's check out the attributes of those files. Let's check out this one out. The properties part, the details. It is 1282, 853 pixels. This one is, sorry, a little bit smaller than that, but taller. And this one is well, twelve eighty eight hundred fifty three. This one and elephant and parrot are same size, but the lioness is a little bit different from them. So it works. So let's go to the sublime text again. So we have this body, there is this heading. You remember that we were doing something like this and I'm now trying to add this Linus image here. Let's do it. I'm going to add an image tag here and it automatically added the source. It is in the images folder the linus.jpg. And let's save it and refresh it. So I got this lion here. Some information about the lioness. Some there is this title of the page, and there is this uh, lion here, and some information about the lion. That is good. Let's go here and well, let's have let's make let us have another heading. Another heading one, and this is the bow zoo. Fine, and let's make this one heading two. And let's have so this is a larger heading, 
in the bozu there is this linus and this is the information about the linus let's have a navigation tool here suppose that we are going to have three files the parrot file the lions file and the elephant file so let's add some links here okay so what i'm going to do is add an a here when i just select a and click it adds all the other details that is going to open the linus html we don't have it right now and it's like that and let me copy and paste paste this is going to be the elephant html elephant well one of the coolest things with that uh, sublime text software is you can edit multiple parts of a file so i can just hold the control key and click 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 and delete all of them for example but that's not necessary right now so let's undo that and line is elephant and the other animal was parrot so that is going to be the parrot well let's save it let's refresh it so i got though we got those pages linus elephant parrot when i click there is nothing here when i click elephant there is nothing here because we didn't create those files that this one is not the linus html this is still my zoo html and let's have a home page okay let's get this and have a, oh, sorry, I'm going to copy this and paste it here. And, well, the home pages are traditionally named as index.html. This is partially a technical requirement because all of the web servers uh, are uh, set to uh, use those files used index html as home page so when you type www.something.com without having any slash and mentioning index html uh, it automatically opens the file which is named as index html so traditionally home pages are named as index so this is going to be our home link So, <clears throat> this is our page, but the problem is it's not formatted right at the moment. So, we can just go to this head part right after the title, we can, well, Let's let me show you to use inline styling first. You can just do something like that. P style equal to uh, let's have a color. Let's make it green. Fine. And let me save it and refresh it. So only this paragraph is green. Well, this is not what we are we want to do in modern websites almost it's not it's almost never used like this the c s s is not never is not used like this so let's go here and have a style tech and let's make a definition for p and those brackets and color red for example which ends with a semicolon color definition co column red semicolon that is semicolon that is 
how you write CSS. So, let's refresh it. Now, as you see, all the P's, all the paragraphs are red. If you want to make only one paragraph red, you can add a class to this one. For example, a class called red paragraph, red para shortly. So, I'm going to delete this and just type dot red para color red this is another thing that you can do with CSS so if you assign this red para class to any object including the headings let's have this one this red para class attribute well not right now let me save it and refresh it oops adding one class Oop. the problem is the quotes well then you are uh, defining attributes they are written in double quotes so this one is red too okay and we don't need to do we are not going to use any classes in that project it's quite simple uh, you can also do something like that you can use the IDs for those objects you can just give an ID attribute to this and set the ID to red para. Oops. But this time, if you are using IDs, you write the code this way. CSS is written this way. The same thing. But keep in mind that you can assign multiple classes to. Uh, you can assign same class to multiple objects, to a paragraph, to something, to another paragraph, to one heading. But the ID is the name of that object. It should be unique. It, uh, it should, there shouldn't be any two P's with the same ID or one H and one P using the same ID in an HTML document. So that is the thing, but we are not going to use this one too. So let's make it P again. Well, I'm not going to make the text red, but let's set the font family first. In HTML, you don't set only a single font. Well, you can set, you can just set Verdana for this one. Sorry. Let's refresh, and now all of them are Verdana. But if I don't have Verdana on my computer, it would be rendered with Times New Roman, or the default font of the browser. It's usually the Times New Roman. So, uh, for this reason, we define multiple fonts as font family. For example, if you start with Arial, comma, Verdana, those codes are not necessary if the font name consists of a single word. It could be Helvetica and Sansei. This means that if there is Arial in this computer, in the computer that the website, web page is rendered, use it. If not, then look for Verdana. If there is Verdana, use Verdana. If there is no Verdana, then try to find some Helvetica. And if you cannot find Helvetica, try to find any sans serif font on that computer to render these paragraphs. That means it. And 
font well this is enough for the font family for right now uh, let's set the font size too sorry you can set the font size in pixels in m's for example you can make it 5m which is going to be very large i guess you know what is an m you get a typography class the width of the letter m in the font selected so 5m is too large well you can make it 1.2m for example you can use point values with the m's also or you can you may decide to use the points as we usually do or since you are rendering the stuff on a screen you can use pixels to 12 points is too small i guess let's make it 14 points so that is for the piece then let's define the heading ones and heading twos together so let's define a font family for them or even you can do something like that if you are going to use the same font all over the page you can just go to define the body so we got this body here and now I have this font family for the body so anything between the body text would be rendered with the Arial Verdona Hermetica sans serif font if it's a P it's going to be size for 14 points if it's an H the font size for these H H1 or if it's an H1 or H2 not font size sorry the font family oops Well, this time I cannot set the font family. If it's an H1 or the H2, the color would be, let's set it to navy. For the colors, you can use names like those. There are some HTML colors. Let's check out. There is this site that I like, W3 Schools. It's a good resource for learning about HTML. Well, let's open a random page there. If I can, I have a very bad internet connection right at the moment. So, oops, I cannot reach it. Let's try it one more time. Yeah, learn HTML. Let's learn it. The HTML colors. So there are some colors, 140 standard color names defined for HTML. You can use them. But also, you can use an RGB value in this way. So red, green, blue, this is going to make get you some red. Or the hex value, hexadecimal value those are also rgb values but another way of representing the uh, html uh, the rgb colors the first two stands for the first two digits here red and the second is for the other two digits in the middle and the last one is the last two digits so you can make your color here and well i'm not going to spend a lot of time with the colors let's make it something like that for those headings so i'm just going to copy this color from here and go to the sublime text so the color for those headings would be something like that and let's save it Let's check out our zoo. So, bow zoo. 
this is something like that looks better starting to look better and let's format this image a little bit maybe you may have multiple images on a page okay you may have two images three images four images so but i just want to format this image so i'm going to give an id give a name for this image so image id is the Let's name it as main image, something like that. And get here. And I'm going to, since I have given an ID, I'm going to use a hash main image and make a definition for this main image thing. For example, I'm going to set its width to, you can make it something in pixels. As you remember, it was something like 1,100 uh, something pixels. Let's see. Uh, well, we cannot see it this way, but we checked it, uh, its properties. And it was like that. 100. 1,166 pixels to 900 pixels. So I want to make it larger. We can make it 1,500 pixels, for example. Let's save it. And refresh it. Or you can make it as wide as its container. Now its container is the body. There is nothing between the image and body. And so the body covers the whole screen. So if you make it 100 pixels, now it's as large as its container. Well, let me go to, sorry, 100%. percent Let's Let me go to this one. Let's make it Let's give it a pixel value first. Okay, 1200 pixels it is, the image. And let me go to browser and refresh it. So when I'm scaling this window up and down, the size of the image doesn't change. But I, but when I set it to a percentage value, like 100% or 80%, whatever it is. The size of the image, let me refresh it, changes relatively. Oops. Going to break, I'm going to open it again. Where is it? On the root, my zoo HTML. Yeah. The size of the image relatively changes based on the size of the window. Why? That is another thing. So, there is this heading 1 and heading 2 here. Heading 1 is for the Bauzu, heading 2 is for Lens. Well, let's make some more definitions for H1. It's background color would be oops let's go to double three schools this color thing again yeah this one and let's try to find some more colors some sort of let's say very very light blue what less green more blue yeah that looks fine I'm not going to take your time with that. Let's get this color and 
Let's set the background color of heading 1 to this color and see what happens here. So, as you see, the heading 1 is a block element that covers the whole page. So, I have something like that. So, maybe I can do something like that with the heading 1. I can add some uh, padding around it. That is, let's have some uh, 30 pixels padding around it. I save my file and refresh it. So this is the padding, the distance between the uh, container of the tag, container of the block element, and the content of the block element. This is padding. And, well, as you see, there is some spacing here. The reason is that body has some margins. Let's set it to zero so it's not margins it's margin let's set it to zero so there is no margin for the body and not sure if there is any padding for the body but let's set that to zero too yeah why there is this white space here then let me see, zoo, heading one. Okay, we will figure that out later. There is no need for this padding here. So the thing is, now this uh, let's try to set the margin for this one to zero. Maybe this is this one's margin. Yeah, plus. So now the bauzu is like a title at the top of the page. But the problem is that it is the whole page and I want to center it to the page. Well, my screen resolution is 1920 right at the moment. But I want to design those for the uh, 1980 uh, resolution computers. Fine. So what I'm going to do is I need to have a container in addition to the body. I need to have a container for those. Or maybe I can set it with the body. Uh, let's set the uh, I'm not sure about this. Let me check the uh, W3 schools again. I get confused about this sometimes. So it is centering. HTML elements. W, no, not the center tags, but which site is that? W, three schools. Okay, let's see this. So there is this. Margin left fifty, margin right fifty. So let's go to this body. I remember it. Uh, we were doing it margin. So margin top is going to be zero. Margin bottom is going to be zero and there is a left margin and right why there is no right margin option here 
Well, margin left is enough, I guess. But yeah, there is no right margin because I didn't close this. And margin right. So these are going to be these two are going to be fifty percent. And let's save it and refresh it. Oops, not a very good idea. When I make both of them fifty percent, it's like that. Oops, maybe. Yeah, that's not the correct way. The better way is let's have a single margin for the body. The better way is have a container here, a div element. This is a block element too. And it contains, well, when I type it, it's going to write it like that. So div is opened here and closed here. And let's assign a, an ID for it. So we can use some other divs. This is going to be main container and let's define it hash main container and uh, with is sorry twelve hundred pixels. Let's save it and let's refresh it. So now it's not as wide as my screen, but the elements in the div container is this width. And let's go to the margin. And let, let's say, let's just say 50% to this, and it's going to be up. Let's set the margin left to 50% and margin. Right to fifty percent. Oh, it didn't work. Oh, again, let me check this CSS page align center. Yeah, this one. Oops, it's going to, it should be, for the body, the margin should be auto, sorry, not zero, but Auto. Again, are you sure about this? Let me try to apply it here. Margin. Auto. Yeah, my mistake. This is going to be zero, no margins for the body, and 
the margin of the div, the container is going to be auto, so it's center line. Sorry, I usually forget about this. So let's continue with this navigation tool. So let's have a uh, now the navigation elements are floating around. So let's have a container for them too. So let's have a div here which is going to contain the links hyper hyperlinks so let's provide an id for this one too it's going to be called main now now not now now main navigation short for navigation so let's have it the name let's Describe it main now. Uh, the background color is going to be some dark color, maybe. Let's find the color. about this one or well, let's use the color that we used for the text this one so this one's background color is this let's see what happened to that yeah this one's height is going to be 40 pixels let's make it And maybe larger that let's make it sixty pixels. Or another way doing of doing this is don't you don't set any uh, color here, but let's have a margin auto property again on this one. So when you do that you will see that all the hmm, why didn't it work? May now, may now, we have the color. Okay. Yeah, not for this one, sorry. Margin is going to be 20 pixels. So margin top 20, margin bottom 20. Not a good idea. Let's have a padding for it. And let's have another container. Let's have this Linus title in another container. So that was the H3. So this one. And H2 it is. So let's Set this heading to some other. Let's align its text. Text align to right. Cool. And maybe we can have some padding for it too, like 10 pixels, a little bit padding, looks nice, and maybe it can have some border right, And border left, borders on the both sides. Oh, I forgot about this one again too. CSS borders, it's here. So there is a way to write them in a single statement.
looking for it. Photo style. Photo shorthand. Looking for this one. Five peaks, solid red. This is the short way of doing this. So first the size. Let's make it two pixels. Well, solid dotted dashed. You have seen that. And the border color is going to be the same color with the main now. Let's save that. And let's see what we have done again. So maybe we should forget about this padding. This should be padding left and padding right. Actually, we don't need any padding left. We have let's have some padding on the right only. Uh -huh. Text the line right, padding. Right. Okay, no margins. Margin zero. Yeah. And let's have some height for it, like sixty pixels. Not a good idea. Let's have some padding. And let's have some more padding, actually. 20 pixels or 25 maybe. Yeah. So I was just trying to make these lines around it. Doesn't look very good, but. That's okay for right now. So what we need to format is those links here. So suppose that we have another hyperlink here. Okay, let's say that we are going to have a link to on this word. to some other place. Let's have a link to HTTP www.edu.tr. This is a link to another website. So let me refresh it. So this one and this those here looks the same. I want to format those, but not this one. So this is why I'm going to say that the links in the main now are going to be This stands for white. One, two, three, four, five, six. And let's have a padding right on them for 20 pixels. And Text decoration is going to be none, so they won't have any underlines. And text 
not text, it's the font weight is going to be bold. Or you can make give a number, let's make it 900. So 900 is too much, let's make it, let's try 600. Yeah, looks nice. So, and one last thing. The main now are hover. That is the mouse over thing for the main now. It's going to have a different color such as not the background color but the other color this one so let's see it looks like that and when I move my mouse over the color slightly changes well, well, it's a very slight change, so maybe you can make it another color or something. Uh, I don't know right at the moment, so let's keep it like that. I don't want to spend some time with uh, spend my time with those colors thing. And now we have these four pages one should be the index html let's skip that but we have this lioness elephant and parent pages we are going to have but let's do something like that when i save those fi this file my zoo html let me save it as elephant html oops Elephant. Well, it was right HTML, but I changed it by mistake. So that's going to be Elephant HTML. Save it as the Linus HTML. And save it as the Parrot HTML. So let's see what we have here. On this side, I got this Maizu thing, but besides it, I got Elephant, Parent, and others. So now I'm on the Elephant HTML. Elephant, Parrot, Linus, they are all the same. But let's change one thing on the Elephant HTML. Let's, for example, so let's change one thing on the Parrot HTML. Let's set this main now link color or let's set this color this one here to red and save the file so when i go to the parrot this one is red but for the others it's still the same color so the better way of having some sort of style sheet is so that is not a good way of doing it let me go to my folder first and let's remove let's delete those elephant and other stuff and let's keep on working a little bit more on this one so this is my zoo again <coughs> uh, instead of writing the style sheet internally on each html document the better way is having it externally so i'm going to cut this out from here there is no style and remove that style thing and let's create a new file and paste that style thing into that file and let's save this file again into this as a css file so the name of the file would be zoo style or something like that zoo style dot css fine let's see what we got here we got this Luzu style css file here so 
But when I do that and save my HTML file, let's refresh it. The my zoo HTML file. Oops, all the styling is gone. We are back to the beginning. But when I get here and add this link tag for the style sheet and link it to style zoo CSS file, let's save it and refresh it. Style zoo or zoo style. Sorry, so it's zoo style CSS, wrong file name. Let's paste it here and save it and refresh it. Okay, we get our style sheet back. And now I go here and save as the lioness. HTML, save it. Save as elephant HTML. It should be same to the names here. And save it. Parrot HTML. And save it. Index HTML. Cool. Let's save it. Save it, save it. So we have many files and probably we don't need the zoo file anymore. So I'm going to delete this my zoo. And let me open this index. It has the Linus. Let me open the elephant. It has the Linus. So let's edit this elephant HTML and let's have this one, let's change this one elephant and the image to elephant JPEG and suppose that this text is different from the other. Open the parrot two and the title heading will be parrot and the image will be looking for the parrot JPEG and this text is different from the other. Let's suppose that it is. Save this one too. And finally we need the index HTML so there is no heading to here and there is no image on the index it has some different design and here it says maybe let's have a heading to here oops and Let's type welcome to Wow Zoo. So we got all of our pages. So when you start with the index HTML, welcome to Wow Zoo. We are a really nice zoo. And let's visit the Linus page. And let's visit the elephant page. And let's visit the parrot page. Simply, a website is something like that. But in modern websites, uh, those pages are not, all of them are not hand-coded. Uh, they may use some automatization tools that generates the content, or there are some software that runs on the server side, web server, and 
you do not uh, write the content inside the HTML, but you write the content inside some on some database or something, and it pulls that content from the database and populates the page templates, server side scripted page templates with that uh, content. The modern websites use those kind of technologies like server side languages like PHP or ASP, Active Server Pages, some stuff like that, are uh, server-side scripting languages that creates the files automatically. So you made one design for the for each animal, lion, elephant, parrot, but you do not change the content, you don't change the image, but you just put a tag in the uh, server side tag uh, right after the image source, get the animal name image here, so it automatically pulls those stuff. That is another technology, and that is the back-end technology, not the front-end technology, so you may need to have some knowledge on it, but you don't need to know all of it. So, congratulations, you made your very first website, and well one last thing if i change the css file right now let me open with anything let's set the main image width to 50 percent okay and when i do that the parrot image is 50 percent the elephant image is 50 percent the lioness image is 50 percent okay uh, just by changing one CSS file, referred by all the other HTML files, you can uh, manipulate the design. So, thank you for listening, and please try to do this on your own, and have some nice time until the next class. Okay, bye.